Hey everyone, Miranda here, and today we're going to be trying out a new recipe. We're going to make these Parmesan crusted chicken tenders. So, um, I totally forgot I spaced, I, I kind of thought last minute I'd go ahead and do a video on this. So in this first bowl right here, I just have some flour, some salt, and some pepper. Um, I didn't really measure them out, I just kind of visualized, you know, kind of how much flour I might need, and then just kind of salt and pepper to my liking. In here, now the recipe says you can use either olive oil or butter. So I have a stick of butter here that I melted and I put a bunch of garlic in. It says to add like three tablespoons. I probably added more, but you guys know I love me my garlic. So that's all that's in that bowl. And then in this bowl right here, I just have some breadcrumbs. I'm, you know, you can use like already seasoned ones. So I just kind of also visualize there. So it's breadcrumbs in here. I added some dried parsley as well as um, some paprika and then just some Parmesan cheese as you can see. And then I have my chicken tenders right there. So this is pretty much the layout that we're gonna go. We're gonna dip the tenders in the flour first, then the butter and then the um, bread and cheese mixture. So we're gonna do that with all of these. Um, I have like two and a half pounds right here of tenders i know my hubby's gonna like love this stuff um we love chicken and whatnot and stuff so and there's five of us so you know it's gonna be a pretty decent amount and we'll have some leftovers for hubby to take tomorrow so to make cleanup a little bit easier i went ahead and i put foil in my pan so let's go ahead and get started so i'm just gonna take a chicken tender again we're just gonna you know Coat it nicely in the flour first. Then put it through the butter. And again, you can use olive oil if you want to. And then I'm gonna go ahead and put it in here. So looks like that. And I'm just gonna put it into our baking dish. So we're gonna do that with all of the tenders. All right, so we got all the tenders nice and coated. They should be looking like that. So we're gonna go ahead and pop this in the oven. So make sure your oven is preheated to 400 and then we are going to set the timer for 15 minutes and then once the 15 minutes is up we're going to flip them over and then we will put them back in for another like five to eight minutes. So if you guys have seen my recipe for like the cheesy chicken, I know it was like a long, long time ago and I think it might have been one of the videos that I had actually deleted. Um, so I made like a sauce. I think it's pretty much the exact same sauce that I'm going to be making. Um, just to like, you can either put this over the chicken or you could like dunk the chicken in it. This recipe actually had a special like sauce that you could dunk with, but I don't have any of the ingredients. It called for like mustard, barbecue sauce, and like coleslaw sauce. I've never even heard of coleslaw sauce. I thought it was just mayonnaise, but... Um, Anywho, so I'm just gonna use a can of cream of chicken. I have like half a container, that's like half full, so I'm gonna use the rest of that. Uh, add in a bit of Parmesan, I have some butter in here, and then just some parsley. I'm just gonna, you know, heat it up, bring it to a little boil, and have that for a sauce for dipping or to put over the chicken. All right, so I have all my ingredients in here. As you can see, I didn't add a whole lot of cheese. Just because I kind of want the sauce to be a little bit thicker for like dipping. I don't want it to be like super like runny. Um, normally, a, like when I make my uh, cheesy chicken, I usually would add like milk to this. But I, depending on how the consistency ends up, I'll probably just leave it as is. If I feel that it needs to be, you know, a little bit less thicker, then I'll go ahead and add a little bit of milk. Okay, so a few minutes have passed, and as you can see, the consistency looks like that. I did not add any milk, and I don't think that I will. This is perfect just as it is. 
All right, you guys, so 15 minutes have passed and this is what it looks like. So now we need to flip them over. So I think the easiest way to do that is gonna be with a pair of tongs. So we're gonna get everything flipped over and then we're gonna put it back in for another five to eight minutes. All right, so I flipped them. So we're gonna go ahead and put it back in, you guys. This smells amazing. It looks really good. It's very cheesy. So I cannot wait to try this. All right, you guys, so as for sides tonight, I think we're just gonna do some plain white rice and like this little mixture stuff that I made. We could even put this over the rice. Um, but plain white rice, and I think we're probably gonna do like salad or something. So I've had lots of people ask me how to make Spanish rice and you guys, it is not as complicated as it sounds. I'm not gonna show you like fully how you do it, but I'm gonna kind of show you how I do my rice. And then I'll tell you how you can actually make Spanish rice, like the ingredients that you'll need. So first, obviously, uh, some oil in the pan. We're gonna heat this up really, really well. And then right here, I just have some rice that I'm gonna be use. I'm gonna use like all of this. Because as you know, rice kind of, um, what is it? Like expands or whatever. When cooking rice, you definitely want to make sure you don't overuse like too much water because then your rice is just going to get all smushy and gross. All right, so I put it, the chicken in for another seven minutes, you guys. Like, oh my gosh, this smells so good. Um, I feel like it could be a little bit more crispier. So I'm probably going to put it back in for just a few more minutes. But this chicken is like super moist, you guys. I cut into it just to double check it. It looks really good and it's super soft. But like I said, I feel like it could use a little bit of extra crunch there. So I'm going to add it. I'm going to go ahead and pop it back in for a few more minutes. So once the um, oil is super hot, as you can tell, the rice is like bubbling there. So that's what we want. You want to give it a good mix. Make sure all the rice gets coated with the oil. And what I like to actually do is at this point, because um, what the hot oil does to the rice is it helps it to expand, like pop, so that it can cook quicker. And then I all, like to all my rice, even if I make just plain white rice, I always add this, the North Suiza, the chicken flavored bouillon. So I'm just gonna, Add some of this and this is literally all that I ever add to my rice I don't add salt because this stuff already has salt in it so you know I just like to add that to give it some flavor give it a good mix and we're just gonna kind of continuously be stirring the rice um, trying to get as much of it like cooked as possible before we add in the water Okay, so I'm not sure if you can tell, but the rice, a lot of it has already um, kind of like popped. I don't really know how to like you like say it in another form other than pop because it's like already kind of expanded uh, and it's kind of already also like changed in color. So at this point is when you would want to add your water to this. And I keep this when I am like frying the rice. I keep it on high the whole time. So we're going to go ahead and add the water to it. Now I'm going to bring this down to like a medium heat. So mine goes by numbers. I always put my rice at five. And the water you add to this, you guys, you want to make sure that it is hot, like boiling if possible, because that's going to help it to cook more quickly as opposed to using like cold water. And like I said, you don't want to overdo the water. Otherwise it's gonna get all mushy. So I have like just enough water in here to cover the rice. And at this point too, um, even before adding the water, say you wanted to do Spanish rice, you guys. So Spanish rice is literally like, it's really just common sense, you guys. In a blender, just add like maybe three to four tomatoes. I cut the tops of them off and then I add them in there. 
I add like one clove of garlic and then I add like a quarter onion and just some salt and the water and you blend it and then before adding the water toss that in here and then you know a little bit of water so that it helps cover everything and literally you're good to go and also at that point you if, you know some Spanish rice people put vegetables in it I'm not real huge on like the peas and corn which some people use you know some people use like the veggie buns that have like even green beans and like lima beans in it I prefer just corn if I do want veggies in my rice um, but so at this point you know before putting the lid on it that would be when you would add the vegetables so again if you're doing the Spanish rice blend up some tomatoes with a tad bit of onion a, you know a clove of garlic and some salt and water pour it in add a little bit of water so that it kind of helps since the the consistency of the sauce is going to be a little bit thick and then add your vegetables if you want and that's really all there is to it you guys so I'm just gonna let this boil should take about maybe like 15 minutes or so it's super easy to make rice you guys <laughs> it really is and um and if you want to take like the cheat cheaty way out um you could even just use a can of tomato sauce tomato paste whichever um instead of blending your own tomatoes i have actually made spanish rice numerous times taking the lazy way out by using a can of the tomato sauce and i've had people tell me that my rice is amazing like you really don't know the difference so Spanish rice is super easy, you guys. I'm just doing plain white rice. Again, this is how I like it with the North Suiza. Sometimes when I do make Spanish rice, though, and I blend my tomatoes, I sometimes add this just for a little extra color, a little extra flavor, but you might not always come across this. Um, this is tomato bouillon, and it has chicken flavor in it. But other than that, you guys, super, super easy to make rice. All right, so I did end up putting it back in for another five minutes. I think this is perfect because I feel like if I do any longer, it's going to dry out the chicken. And the chicken is still really moist. It smells so amazing, you guys. It reminds me of, like, pizza crust or, like, breadsticks or something. I don't know. But it smells so good. I cannot wait to try this. So now I'm just waiting on the rice and then the salad. That'll go along with the chicken. Oh my gosh, you guys. So I cannot wait to plate this up. I just had to try the chicken. And let me tell you, this is so amazing. <laughs> like, for real. Like, the, the taste of, like, the Parmesan breading is so, so good. But then dipped in the sauce that I made is, like, even more amazing. Oh my gosh. I, I highly recommend this. I know my hubby's going to love this. Because it's pretty much just like the cheesy chicken that I make and he absolutely loves that stuff with rice and the sauce oh my gosh you guys this the sauce is perfect for this dipping and it's just so tasty all right you guys and after about 15 minutes or so all the water has been absorbed and look at my rice you guys you see it is so perfect my, my rice lately has just been so so perfect like I'm loving it I usually never used to use white rice I always use um bought converted rice because it was the one that always worked out for me but at least now I know white rice does work for me so you know gotta use up all the white rice that I have so we'll be having that with the chicken and then like a salad on the side and of course this yummy yummy sauce you guys like this really did take up the chicken like another notch and then I'm sure it'll be really good over the rice as well. So I'm excited for dinner, you guys. So that's everything. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye, guys.